everyone. Hello. Welcome to Facebook land, live land. It's good to see you all this evening. Although I can't see anything, I'm looking at a camera, but I know you're there. So God bless you and joining in with us on our Wednesday night live when it's just a short time of communion, but we'd like to share together and give you opportunity to come back to us if you have any prayer requests. Jemima's back this evening. The dogs are here. Kathy's here. And we're going to uh, read some scriptures. Kathy's going to read a scripture this evening from a Psalm. Psalm 121. It's a very familiar one. You'll probably know a lot of this by heart. So it's Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Wonderful. What a great psalm. I know many of you will love that psalm. Probably one of your favourites. And I was thinking, well, we were talking we were talking today. Kath and I were talking. We walked into town this morning. Tell us what happened, Kath. You saw some jets. Well, I, I was listening to another Ch Gerard song this morning, and the words were saying, Look up, look up, your redemption draws nigh. And as we were walking along to town, we heard the sound of some RAF planes over us in the sky. And we both stood still and looked up. And we couldn't see anything, we could hear them. It was cloudy, wasn't it? We knew they were there somewhere, we couldn't see anything, but we looked up and then I said to Kinsey, gosh, it's hard looking up. And it struck us both that, yep, it's hard looking up, but we have to look up because our redemption is drawing nigh. And so it prompted me just to write down a few scriptures before we started this evening. You know, that verse in Luke 21, verse 28. When we see these things happening around us, look up. Be encouraged because your redemption draws nigh. We're going to be called home one of these days. So be encouraged. We're not at the end just yet. We'll know when we are and God will know when Jesus will know. Will know. And that'll be a wonderful thing. So our redemption draws nigh. And that's Sam that I got Kathy to read. Look up, look up to our, lift our eyes to the hills. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. So your help doesn't come from us doesn't even come from a communion service though what that brings us to is the Lord so our our redemption comes from him and we look to him and then a couple of other scriptures that I looked at just before one's 1 Kings 18 when Elijah said to his servant you remember when he prayed down the fire of God and there was a drought and he, they went up on the on the cliff and he said to his servant look towards the sea look lift up your lift up your eyes look up and then the servant eventually saw nothing for a while, but was it on the seventh time he saw a, a, a cloud the size of, of a fist, a man's hand. And then Elijah knew that God was about to move in a tremendous way. So I want to encourage you, look up. You're going to see the rain coming one of these days very soon. And of course, I suppose the most familiar one would be when Jesus, just before he was taken away to heaven, the angels said to the people when they were looking up the disciples were looking up thinking where's he where's he gone we saw him actually physically go up to heaven that is the angel said to him you don't need to look up because he's going to come back in exactly the same way that you see him go so listen folks today we have more hope than anybody in this earth because this Jesus who went back into heaven is going to come and get us. He's coming back one day. We will be with him forever. What a wonderful hope mm. that is for you and for me. And so we can share together. You going to say something else? Yeah. I, I also think that when we look up, that we're expecting his redemption to draw nigh. But actually, as we look up, his redemption can draw nigh to our friends and our family that we're praying for. If we look to them and see things are hopeless, well, that's what we focus on. But as we look up, his redemption can also draw nigh to those around us. And that's, that's what we're about, isn't it? Seeing God's kingdom come and his redemption drawing nigh to, to people who are surrounding us. 
We had a lovely conversation with a lady. We went out for coffee today. You know, it's it's here in the UK and if you're abroad, we have this wonderful thing where from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for the month of August, we can eat out to eat in, it's called, and you get things half price up to £10 per person. So we went out for coffee this morning. The lady on the table beside us lives in, in a village in North Yorkshire, but she, we were just talking about how affected we can be by listening to the news and by listening to an awful lot of negativity. Now, I know we need to know what's going on, but it can affect us so easily. Easily. And the message for you today is this, is don't look at the screen, although you may have to take in something from it, but look up. Because when we look up, we get our perspective right. It takes our eyes off ourselves, off the circumstances, and it puts our eyes on him. So let's share together. Kathy's going to read again. I think we're in, in, uh, in Corinthians here. And we'll, we'll get our eyes on the cross today as Kathy reads with us. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Until he comes, so look up. Uh, of course, some churches call it the Eucharist, and that's the, the word the Eucharist means to give thanks because Jesus gave thanks. That's what the word Eucharist means. And it comes from the word charis, which means grace. You is, a, is an adverb that means well. So what Giving thanks, it's what it actually means in the Greek is this, it's grace doing well. So when we give thanks for the, the bread this evening, grace is released to work in our lives. And so grace, as we take this, grace works in your life. What do you think it does? Anytime you read about grace in the New Testament, there's always power very close with it. Great power was among the apostles. Great grace was among them all. It's the same thing, really. Grace, it's his power, his power doing well in our lives so let's take his his the, the bread this evening and let's share together and be thankful for all that jesus has done for us Jamala. then he took the cup and he gave thanks eucharist he gave thanks and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant uh, to remember him. It's a memorial of him. It's not a dead memorial. It's something just to remember that he gave his life for us. And so as we drink together tonight, we drink him, his life giving flow into our our bodies, our physical bodies, into our mind. If you've been disturbed in any way, if you're, you've been upset with what's going on, if you're feeling lonely, as we drink together, you can drink his strength into your mind, into your emotions, into your will, into every part of your life, your soul. We drink his strength in that. So let's join together and, and drink. Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? So we're going to look up today and I want to encourage you as you go through the rest of this week, make it a point each day not to look sideways, not to look at the TV, not to just look at the social post, though of course you're on Facebook tonight, but to look up because our redemption draws nigh. Don't worry about what's going on. You're safe. You are secure in the hand, in the, in the hand of the living God. You are totally secure this evening, however you feel. Whatever people have said to you, you might have had somebody cranky with you in a shop today because you didn't have your mask on right, or you might have somebody gave off to you somewhere, doesn't matter because Jesus thinks you're wonderful. And as we look up, he fills our heart with an expectation that he's in control. It's wonderful. Let's pray. Are there any prayer requests, you might? No, no prayer requests. Oh, great. Everybody's great tonight. Well, we're going to pray for you anyway, that God will bless you in your home. We have some prayers, as I've said to you each evening, that God, uh, that people are brought to us. But we're going to pray, and then Kathy's going to read a hymn to see us out this evening. Father, I just thank you for each one of our family that's joined with us around the world. Thank you for those who will watch later on. Thank you for those who are, are just sitting, just relaxing in your presence. 
I pray for those, Father, who are worried at this moment. Maybe those who are have went and had a test for COVID-19 and don't know yet what the results of the test are. Lord, for those who maybe feel lonely and feel isolated on their own and just need a hug, Lord, would you come alongside them? Those of us who we just don't know what's going to happen, would you come close to us? And Lord, I lift especially the, the city of Beirut to you this evening. I pray for the Lebanon. I pray, God, for, for a peace to come to that city. Lord, I thank you for all the countries that have offered to help. And I pray, Lord, that you will be with those people in the hospitals there who don't know how they're going to go cope because some of them are destroyed. And so, Lord, I pray for those people who are suffering this evening, for those poor people around the world who are suffering from COVID-19. God, would you strengthen them? Would you bless the doctors and nurses and medical people who are helping to make sure to try and find a, a solution to this? So bless our people tonight, I pray, in Jesus' name. Kathy's, uh, Jemima's writing down one prayer request for me this evening. She so just hold on one sec before Kathy reads, and we'll bring that to you. And greetings from our dogs as well this evening. They're doing very well. Somebody, Anne, always asks how the dogs are, so they're doing really well. We want to pray for, from, Kathy's asked us to pray for Jean Hardwick having an operation from cancer on her nose. So we want to pray for Jean. Can you lift Jean up to us, to, uh, to the Lord this evening? Lord, we lift Jean into your presence. And Lord, as she goes for this operation, I pray for wisdom and for strength and for insight from the surgeons. And I pray especially for the healing hand of God to be with her. Send your angels into that operating theater that they would move upon Jean's life and upon her body and bring success to this operation. But most of all, bring your healing power through her nose, God, and through her body and bring total deliverance and healing from this cancer in Jesus' name. Amen. Kathy's going to read a hymn. Another one I'm not sure of the tune of, but the words are great. It says, Sweet is the hope that is thrilling my soul. I know I'll see Jesus someday. Then what if the dark clouds of sin o'er me roll? I know I'll see Jesus someday. Though I must travel by faith, not by sight, I know I'll see Jesus someday. No evil can harm me, no foe can affright. I know I'll see Jesus some day. Darkness is gathering, but hope shines within. I know I'll see Jesus some day. What joy when he comes to wipe out every sin. We know we'll see Jesus some day. What a day that will be yes. when our Saviour we will see. It will be a wonderful time. But until then, we'll encourage one another. We just want to encourage you tonight. You're doing a great job. You're, you're there in your home, blessing God. He's getting you ready for something tremendous. So God bless you. Keep the faith. Keep strong in him. Keep looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. Keep encouraging yourself in the Lord. If you need to send a message to us, to, if you need encouragement, just drop us a line. We'll pray for you. We'll send you a word of encouragement. But keep looking up, looking on to him, the author and the finisher of your faith. And God will get you through this. And you'll be a blessing to people wherever you go. So we'll be back uh, tomorrow. Jemima we'll be, be back tomorrow. Me. Jemima will be with me tomorrow. And that's tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then live again on Sunday. So God bless you, and we pray you'll have a good week as you keep looking. Sorry, Jemima, just got another one. Just hold on there one second. There's one other prayer request coming in on the teleprinter, printed in by Jemima's fair hand in front of us. So one sec, and then she'll tell us what this is, and then we will come to a conclusion. Pregnant pause. It's coming. All right, one last prayer. Oh, Gail Hartley. Oh, okay. Oh, Gail's praying for Doreen. That's All right, let's funny. pray for Doreen over, this is over in Texas, in Quitman, in our second home, over there in East Texas. Okay. Kathy and I are looking forward to being there, hopefully again soon, and for uh, Doreen Hartley. Let's pray for her, that God will bless. She says she's had a spell, so obviously had a little turn. God would just lift Doreen into your presence right now and ask you that you touch her. Would you join your faith with us, please, that God would touch her in her home in Quitman 
and that she would be blessed and that the healing power of God would flow through her today and that she would be encouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So God bless you all and we will see you tomorrow. Keep looking up. Amen. Bye-bye.